Hello guys, welcome again to my channel and welcome to a new tutorial. Today we're gonna go over Spring Security 6 and JSON Web Tokens. So we're gonna take a look at the architecture of Spring Security, we're gonna see how the components work, and at the same time we're gonna build our own authentication API using JSON Web Tokens. So right now you have in screen the diagram of what we're going to be building in today's tutorial. Okay, so the first step is going to be when a user sends a request to a protected endpoint. After the request, the first thing that's going to be executed is our security filter chain, which essentially is going to capture the request and is going to tell us if a user or a specific user can access or cannot access the requested endpoint. So as you guys see in the graph, we can have many filters, but the most important filter that we're going to focus on is the JWT authentication filter, which essentially its function is going to be to take the JWT and go to step number two and validate this JSON web token. So essentially what's going to happen is that we're going to validate if the JSON web token has an expire. As you guys will see, we can set up a time limit in our JSON web tokens for security reasons. Besides the time, we also need to validate that the token has its authentication signature because every token is going to have a cryptographic signature that's going to tell us that the token is supposed to be the token from our application. So if we can validate this token, we're going to have an invalid JSON web token as you guys see in the graph. But if we're successful validating the token, we're going to go to step number three. Inside the token, we're going to have a username or an email. So in step number three, what's basically is going to happen, we're going to take it we're gonna extract it and then we're gonna go to our database and get the rest of the information for the user that's trying to authenticate the request. And then once we have all the information from the user, we go back and then we go back to our security chain and then we go to our step number four. And in step number four, we're gonna go to our security context holder. But what's basically is going to happen is that we're going to create a security context object that will contain the user, the password, and all the permissions that a certain user has. And it's going to set up this object in our security context, which is, uh, which is stored in our security context holder. And once we have finished with step number four, all that's rest is to go to step number five, which is the protected controller. And then we just return the response. Okay, guys, now, so let's create a project. So I'm here in the Spring Initializer. So, so we're going to use Maven in our project. We're going to use Java as our language. Our Java version is going to be the lastest one. The group of the project is going to be a Stefano Dev. And the name of the project is going to be Spring security and we're going to use the packaging jar java 17 is going to be the version that we're going to use in this uh, project okay guys so now let's install the dependencies and we're going to use a spring web we're going to use um let's see spring data we're going to use postgres sql so let's install the driver postgres driver this one right here we're going to use validation as well so let's install validation and we're going to need of course a spring security so yeah we're going to be using these five dependencies so now let's generate the project and now we have our project right here so let's go ahead and open the project in intellij okay guys so now that we're here we're going to go to my a main folder to Java to just want to go to the entry point of the application and then it's this one right here. So the first thing that we want to do, um, just want to, I want to test the application. So I want to run the application so we know everything is working. So since I have the Postgres driver, I have to install or set up my database first. So just go to the application properties and I'm just going to copy and paste this code, these snippets. So this is basically your uh, database URL, your server port, and then you have to specify the driver, which is the PSQL driver that we're going to use, and then your database. And then this is my, my database is running in my local host. So and so I'm just specifying my local host and this is the name of my database, uh, template one. I'm going to show you that in one second. Uh, this is not really that important, but yeah, if you're using Postgres, just do that. And then let's go right here to the entry point and just as a sign that my application is working, let me print something in the console. As always, I only like to print hello world. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So let's run the project and make sure everything's working and then we can start coding our application yep we see hello world so the application is working we have connected to the database successfully so the first thing that we're going to do i'm gonna go right here to my let me close this folder and we're gonna create a package or folder let's name it user 
so let's name this user and inside here I'm going to create a few files so the first thing I want to create is an enum so let's name it permissions and we're gonna have two permissions uh, read all products and save one product okay so we're gonna have these two permissions so let's go again to our package and create a new enum so right here and it's gonna be an enum and this one is gonna be called roll so let's name it role and we're going to have two roles. We're going to have one call customers and then another one admin. So customer, let's just do capital. Okay. So we're going to have this customer and this admin. And as you guys see our customer, we're going to pass a list of permissions. So our customer has only one permission and then your admin has more permissions, has read all products, save one product. And if you go back here to permissions, we could have way more permissions. So, you know, that depends on the use case of your application, but just for simplicity, you get the idea. We're just going to have two permissions here and we're, ha we're having an error because we need the constructor and the getters and the setters. So let's generate this uh, with the help of NTLJ. So let's just click this here and that's it. And then we're going to have our getters and our setters. Okay. So now that it is ready, we're pretty much done in this file. So let's keep going. So now let's go again to our file tree and I'm going to create another folder. This one is going to be called product. And inside here, I'm going to create a product uh, model. So let me right click and then let's create another class and then let's just name it product right here. And I'm just going to close the file tree and this is the class. So let's have an annotation. This is going to be an entity. So we tell our future database that this is going to be the table and let's generate a few values. So the first one is going to be, of course, the ID. So let's use a long ID here, name and also a price, right? So let's generate private. And also we're going to have a decimal, right? So private big decimal. So that's it. So now let's have a few notations here. So let's tell our database that this is going to be the primary key. Let's have another one to generate the values, uh, you know, automatically. So generate value and then pass the strategy and generation type is going to be to identity. This one. Perfect. Now we're going to have another one. Let's pass null here. So since we are generating these values, we're going to tell the front end that they, that this is null because we are already doing it. So yeah, that's what we're going to do right here. So now let's have another validation right here, which is not blank, not blank. Let's me, let me find it. Not blank. So this is not going to be blank. Another one. And let's have another validation here. So since I'm working with decimals, there's this uh, annotation right here, decimal minimum. So the decimal minimum for the price, let's just have a value right here and let's put a 0 0.01. Yeah, that's going to be good. So yeah, that's pretty much our product model. So now let me generate the getters and the setters. So let's right click, let's generate and select getters and setters and here with Mac and command select all of them and that's it guys. So now let's do the same but for the user. So let me go back to the file tree and then let's go back to the user uh, folder uh, right here and then let's generate another class which is going to be called user and let's close the file tree and we have to do just pretty much the same process. So entity right here. And then this one, since this is the user table, um, let me name a table. I'm going to change the name because it's always when you're working with database, it's always, they always reserve the name user. So if this is saves as user, it's going to be a confliction of names. So let's just, what I do right here is just name it underscore user and then boom, the problem solved. So now let's create the attributes. So private, um, long ID, let's have a name and a password. So private tree name and then private one. So now we're going to have the private, the role. So let's have a role. That's what we created before. And then we're going to pass in the role right here. Okay. That's good. So let me just make sure we have to make sure this role comes from the enum that we created. So yeah, it's this one right here. Perfect. Now let's do our annotations. Let's start from the 
top and down so this is the primary key so this is going to be a primary key next we're going to have to generate this value so generate value and let's pass this strategy and generation type which is going to be identity there you go so now we need a new annotation right here on the enum that we're using so enum enumerate it right here and then we have to pass the enum type so enum type this is the ordinal is the enum type that comes by default so ordinal means uh let me show you um this is the role so ordinal means that the customer or customer is one and admin is two so numbers are passed as the ordinal value but since we don't want that we want the name in the database so we have to just pass here a string that's it so now the uh actual red name so now the actual name of the role is going to be passed instead of the ordinal type so now let me create or generate the gators and the setters so right click generate and then select gators and setters so let me select everything okay perfect so we're done here so let's go back to the file tree and well we have a lot of files open let me close them and now we need to um, let's take care of the repository. So let's go to the product um, uh, package right here and let's create a new interface. And that's gonna be our repository. So let's create a Java class. Let's create interface here and name, and name it product repository. Okay, now we have to extend the JPA repository jpa repository right here then we're gonna pass our product passing your product and then also pass your long which is the primary key of your product right so that's pretty much it here and we're gonna do the same for the user so let's go back to the follow tree and right here let's create a new interface and let's just name it user repository let's extend everything for the jpa repository let's pass in your user and then let's pass in the primary key of the user, which is a long. And I have an error right here. We have a class, it has to be an interface. Uh, sorry about that. There you go. So we have an interface right here. And yep, that's it. Okay, guys, so really quick, I wanna show you the Spring security documentation. So I'm right here in the Spring uh, website. So just go here to Spring security. And then you have to go here to learn and then select whichever is your lastest version. Currently for me, 6.2.2. So let's just go there. And then below here, we are gonna have our servlet applications and then reactive applications. Uh, if you're familiar with Spring, you're gonna know that we have uh, the typical MVC architecture model. And then we also have the reactive Webflux uh, model uh, for applications. So the one that we're gonna be taking a look at today is this one, the servlet applications. But on the Future, I'm going to create the authentication system for our reactive application as well so wait for it and just go right here to get in started now go right here to the architecture part because we're gonna I want to show you really quick how I want to go through the documentation with you guys really quick so we ingrain the fundamentals in our brains and then when we start coding this is not going to be Chinese for us so yes let's go in deep into this documentation and the first thing that you're gonna see right here in this image is that we have the channel filters from Jakarta that hasn't been yet applied to our application because uh, nothing it's connected yet so we have our client right here and then we have our filter chain and as you see whenever we have a request uh, a client or a client makes a request it's gonna go through this chain of filters this filter one then this filter two then the next filter until it gets to the servlet which is essentially the application so that's going to be essentially always the first step when we go through the authentication process so the next step of what's going to happen is down below here you're gonna see that we have this object delegating filter proxy this is what's going to essentially going to link our lifecycle from spring with the application context of spring security you have it right here spring provides a filter implementation name delegating filter proxy this allows bridging between the server container lifecycle and the spring application context so the next step after everything has been linked we're going to delegate the next step of the filter chain to this bin filter and which one is this bin filter if you scroll down right here you're gonna see it's our filter chain proxy so what essentially is going to happen here is that we're going to inject this bin into 
to our filter and this is the filter that we're always going to use that's part of the Jakarta API and what's pretty much going to happen is this filter chain proxy it's going to coordinate the execution for our security filter chain that's right here and then that's going to take us to the next step and then when we go right here, we already have a visual of what's the security filter chain inside. And as you guys see, it's a chain of filters that so we have a filter from zero to filter N, and we can have many filters right here that come from Jakarta. And then below here, we're gonna have a very important part because you can see right here that we can have many security filter chain inside the security filter chain. And just as a very simple demonstration, we could maybe have in this API, this is going to be our authentication with JSON web tokens for APIs. And then right here, we're gonna have another type of authentication such as email and password once we have received a request to our filter chain only one of these is going to be executed so let's say that we are making requests to our api so if we go right here and then we go right here only this one is going to be executed not the two of them so yeah and below here your guys gonna see the implementation of the security config or the filters it's pretty easy pretty standard and this is exactly what we're gonna do in one sec so basically you have to specify a class they call it security config and then and then write the following annotations configuration and enable web security and yeah that's pretty much it below here is just showing us how we can create our own customer filters let me show you this part right here because this is also very important the handling security exceptions for our authentication system and as you see we have two types of components right here the start authentication the authentication entry point that's going to be handling our authentication pretty much and you have you can see the our request cache right here and then the security context holder that's going to hold our authentication state and if we already authenticated and then we want to do a request to an admin endpoint for example we're gonna have this access denied handler that's going to be handling those types of uh, exceptions right and then below here you're gonna see some uh, documentation on caching and then I think also from login and that's pretty much architecture It's a very extensive but a really good documentation now let me go right here to authentication and authorization because it's what we pretty much going to be working today and if you open this part you're gonna see the authentication has its own architecture you can see the security context hole there everything that we're going to create and and the authorization has also its own architecture and which is pretty much going to be handling who has permission to certain resources or not so admin users managers so one of the most important things that you have to take in consideration is that every architecture here in authorization and authentication have their own manager component so let me this is authorization let me show you the authentication part in the authentication architecture we already saw the overall architecture of the authentication framework right so now we're going to take a look at the authentication part we have a security context holder and then the manager it's uh it's this one right here we have an authentication manager that's going to be handling the authentication filters part so pretty much in java terms this authentication manager is an interface that we are going to implement using this provider manager and this is as you guys can see right here this is the most commonly used implementation of the authentication manager uh, this provider manager is what we implement is the strategy that we're going to be using in today's application you guys can see this graph right here that's going to that's going to explain everything but yeah that's pretty much the whole essence to it I think I explained you at the beginning of the tutorial the security context holder but this is the security context holder that's going to hold or you know our security authentication object which it has our permissions or credentials and everything okay guys so back in our project let's start creating a folder right here that's gonna be called config and this is going to hold all the configuration files that we're going to create for the authentication system so I'll name this config and the first thing that we want to create is the authentication manager so let's create this class that's going to hold all, all the bins from the application so let's name it security bins injector and since this is going to hold bins you always have to specify the component annotation right here so let's type the annotation bin right here and then we're gonna have a method public and it's gonna be an authentication manager type so bring the authentication manager and then just name it authentication manager close parentheses open square bracket just like a method and now we need to bring the authentication configuration and we could do it here as a constructor doing in uh, uh, doing the auto wire authentication but since we're using bins every time that you're using a bin you can do this directly in the param so that's what we're gonna do because it's gonna make our code a little bit cleaner so just bring in this authentication configuration authentication configuration 
this one right here and then name it authentication configuration and then basically how do you create this authentication manager you only have to use this authentication man uh, configuration right here so bring in the authentication uh, not this one authentication configuration and then call this method or the authentication manager and then it's going to ask you to add this exception right here so throw the exception right here and then put this one that's pretty much it and what we did right here is that we created the provider manager so let me put a comment right here so provide um, provider manager and as I said before in the explanation of the documentation this provider manager is implementing this authentication manager so provider manager implements the authentication manager and just remember guys this authentication manager is what holds all the authentication methods that we can implement in a security spring authentication system so we have that authentication which is the one that we're interested in the one that uses a repository besides those we have the open authorization with google etc so yeah that's something that you guys have to take in consideration always okay guys so now let's create another bin and this one is going to be the authentication provider right so let's create a public method right here then let's bring in the authentication provider so i think it's authentication provider there is this one right here let's name the method authentication provider and then let's open and close the method right here so we need to bring in the DAO authentication provider repository so we can connect to our database and then get the user uh you know the user date the user details passwords etc so let's bring in the DAO authentication so this one the authentication provider let's call it provider and then let's initialize the object here so new DAO authentication provider and that's it so what we're basically going to do is to create that user detail service and in order to access our user information we're going to use our password and for that or and remember that our passwords are always encrypted so for that we're going to use a password encoder to encode and decode our password so we need to use and create the password encoder first so first we need to uh just for the moment i'm gonna have my set user detail service right here so set user is this one right here so this one right here and that's just pass null for now and then we need to call in the provider and then here we have to set the password encoder so bring in the password encoder right here so right here just return the provider for now so we need to return the provider so put provider right here and then we need to create the password encoder first so let's create another bin so bin right here and then just create a public method public and then call it password encoder so you have to bring in the class password encoder this one right here call it password encoder boom boom the method and then return the new return and we're gonna use the bcrypt password encoder which is the most used one so yeah pretty much that's it okay so now let's create the user the service so let's create another bin right here and then you have to specify again another method public then user uh user detail service is this one right here let's bring it in then let's call the method user detail service and you can either follow the long path which is creating the class and then implementing this method or just use a lambda right so you use the lambda right here and then we're gonna have our method right here it's the easiest and cleanest way of accomplishing these tasks so we need to uh return a username and for that we have to use our user repository so let me call in the user repository repository and i haven't um inject this user repository so you're not gonna see it and we haven't created this method yet as well so we're gonna have a method that's gonna be to find the username so we're gonna pass in the username right here and that's pretty much it so we need to also handle any exception that we have so we have to have a point right here or else throw so just go ahead here and initialize the class runtime exception and then just put a message right here like user not found here and that's pretty much it so now we have to go above and inject our user repository in our bean class and like i said before we can either do it here or just if we're using a bean just you know for simplicity just calling the user repository right here user um repository this one then use a repository and then that's it so now we need to go ahead and create this method so let me go just type 
go ahead and create the method right here and well pretty much what you gotta do right here is just make this an optional and then we're gonna return a user right so let's just put a user right here and then that's it so once we're done here let's just go back to the security pins inspector class you're gonna see that we're getting an error right here and this is because we are this user detail service is expecting us to return a type of user details and right now we are returning a user type so we pretty much have to implement our user details into our user class to summarize what we're going to do right now so just go here to your user which is what you're returning right now so let's go ahead and implement this user details that comes from security that comes from spring security so implement this one and then it's going to ask you to to generate a few methods so let's just do it and we're going to take care of the implementations right now okay so we generate those methods and then they're going to be right here okay so let's start working with this get authorities and our authorities are basically our permissions the user details implementations and spring security overall only works with authorities that's why we have to treat these authorities as our permissions so we're going to use a prefix for that so let me just implement this so you guys have the idea of what i'm talking about right now okay so this is the method so let me go a little slow so you guys can understand so we're going to have a list of granted authorities so what we pretty much have to do is go to a role get the permissions and then we're going to stream and map each permission and then assign that permission remember that we don't work with permission in spring uh, security so we have to create a stream and loop for each of them create a simple granted authority so spring knows what we are working with so right here we need to call in the authorities and add our roles because we need to find a way to differentiate between our permissions and our roles uh, so that's why we are going to create a simple granted authority right here and name it role so we know that we are talking about the roles right here and then passing the name then you just return your authorities and yep so now let's get working on the other methods right here above so this pretty much so pretty much what you gotta do here is just return true to all of them so return true return true return true and then return true to this one as well okay you guys so we're pretty much done here so let's go back to our security pins inspector and as you guys are gonna notice we don't get the error anymore because now we are returning the correct type so right now we have to inject our user repository but let's just have a centralized form so let's just auto wire it right here so we're not gonna need the user repository anymore uh here and then we can inject the user detail servers right here again and that's pretty much it and then below here i don't have to inject this user the servers that have to inject the password encoder all right guys so now that we're pretty much done with our beans class so let's go back to the file tree now this time we're going to start working on the security filter chain so let's go to the config folder and let's create a new class which we're just going to name security filter let's close in the file tree and then as you guys remember as per the documentation we need to establish a few annotations so the first one was configuration and then you have to code the next one which is enable web security so enable so now the next thing that we have to do is create or bean so let's call in the bean annotation right here uh, create a public security filter chain so it's this type right here and then call the method security filter chain so the next thing that we need to do we need to inject our http security builder so we can either do it here or since we are using a bean just let's just do it here so call in the http this one right here and then call it http so you pretty much have to call the http uh, object and then call the build uh, method right here to build the object we can specify many configurations before this as per the documentation so let's just work on that and something else we need to add an exception right here to the signature method right here so we don't get this error so the first thing that you have to do is call the http object so the first thing that we need to do is disable the cross eye request for jury and if you're familiar this is a web security vulnerability that steals your session but since we're using JSON web tokens there's no point we don't have we don't really have sessions or sessions are based on the JSON web token so we need to disable this that's kind of the main point of why spring security provides this method for us so we can disable it manually so that's pretty much what you gotta do right here just disable this part so the next thing that we need to do is we need to configure our session management and our session management is pretty much what's going to control our session so since we are using JSON web tokens we don't we are not really using sessions let me just 
specify the method right here and I'm going to give you the explanation right here. So session. So what we're doing right here is creating a Lambda session management config and then calling the session creation policy, which is what's going to create our session. And we're going to specify that our session is going to be stateless because we're using JSON web token. So we're not really using sessions like in older applications. Back in the day, applications used to use a session object that was what was created after a user authenticated. And that wasn't really an efficient way because imagine a big application like Amazon that has thousands of thousands of thousands of users. And for every user authentication, there's a session object created for a big as application like Amazon. It wasn't something that was going to scale well. So that's why nowadays we have JSON web tokens, which is not really an object created in the memory. We have a token that's going to handle the authentication for us. Pretty much the JSON web token is what's going to handle the authentication and the authorization side of things. So yeah, that's basically it. You just have to pass in the session creation policy as a stateless, no state in the session. Okay, so for the next thing that we need to configure is the authentication provider. Let's call in the authentication provider right here. And we already created this bin, so we just need to inject it. So let's go up here and then let's call the auto wire annotation and then call private here and then call the authentication provider here and then authentication provider. And now we're just gonna grab this authentication provider and pass it right here. Okay, so now we need to configure the authentication side of things. So we need to tell our system which endpoints are public and which endpoints are private. And the same for the private methods, which roles have permissions to access certain endpoints of the application. So let's call the authorized HTTP request and then right here, configure an object and then make this a Lambda function and, and then open curly brackets because we're going to have a few configurations right here. So if you want to configure a public endpoint, what you're going to do is you're going to call your out config object right here and then call the request matchers function right here. And then you have to pass in the type of method that you want to specify, which is public. So we're going to have, we haven't created any endpoints right now. So we haven't created our controllers. I'm going to do that in one second, but this is what you pretty much have to specify right here. So as you see, we can specify our pick between an HTTP get post. So we're going to have our method for authentication is going to be a public endpoint. So anyone can authenticate or log into our system. So it's going to be a post. Next, you have to specify the pattern or the URL. So the URL is going to be right here. Let's call it out and then authenticate. And I repeat, I haven't created this yet. I'm going to create these controllers in one second. And then you have to specify the property permit all. And this is what's going to make your endpoint public. So if you want to, let's say that you want to specify another method public. So just copy and paste this part and then copy and paste it right here. Let's say that it's not a pos method is a get method. So just put get here and then you put the URL. So whatever you want to put right here. So maybe, um, maybe register, maybe register, but that would be post. So we change that to post and then it's public. That's the entire flow to it. If you want to specify public endpoints and now we need to configure one more thing, the errors, there's an error endpoint that comes from default with a spring security. So we just need to configure here and again, the request matchers. And then inside here, just specify the error. Now, and I repeat, we don't have to create this endpoint. It's already created by the framework. So just permit all. And essentially, whenever we have an error, everything is going to be routed to this endpoint. But we're not going to use this register now. So let me delete it here. All right. So now if you want to configure the private endpoints, we need to do the same pretty much. It's all it's very similar. So we're going to call our out config request matchers, call the request matchers right here. And then you have to specify the type of method that we're going to specify. So it's, we're going to have a an HTTP uh, method that get because as remember, we have a product model that we're going to use to test this application. And this is going to be located in the products URL. And now remember that we have different roles in our application. So once a user authenticates, we have different roles. So admin or user. So we have to specify who has permission, who has the authority to access these routes. And that's where this method come in place that has authority. And here's where we can pass the permissions that we created before. For. So let me call permission and then we're going to specify or permission, which is only read all products. So users who have this permission are the ones that are going to be able to access this endpoint. So now it's giving us an error because I think we have to convert this to, uh, we just have to get the name or convert it to a string. So 
um yeah so it's this one just specify the name right here and then that's pretty much it now let's just copy and paste this one right here because we're gonna have another one to create products another method so let's call this post and then the authority would be different so instead of read all products we're gonna have the save one product right here and yeah that's pretty much it so as you remember let me go to the user class right here so what spring boot is pretty much going to do is going to use this get authorities method that we created before and then it's going to grab that list of permissions that the user has thanks to this uh, logic that we implemented before and then based on the permissions is going to decide whether or not we have permission to access these routes and then one more thing that we need to configure is just calling your out config here and then any request call this any request uh, method here and then deny all and this is going to deny any other request that's not going to be mapped to or endpoints. So if a user tries to access other endpoints, that's not the endpoints that we have specified here is going to be denied by the application. Okay, so now that we're done here, let's go to the file tree and then we have to configure a few things. So let me close, I have a bunch of files open. So let me just close everything right here, everything about the security filter. And then let's create, and then we have to create a new package, which is gonna be our authentication package. And this is going to hold hold most of our authentication files because we need to configure a few of them so let's call the authentication let's create an authentication server which is going to contain our methods for logging in and register and such so yep so pretty much this authentication servers is going to be used for our method we need to create an authentication response and an authentication request containing you know username and password and then the authentication response containing the json web token so uh, let me create those files as well right here so yep so authentication response and then let's create another one and go here and authentication request all right so the authentication response is just going to have one attribute which is a private string and that's that's going to be the JSON web token, of course. That's going to be our response after we log in. And let me go ahead and create a constructor for this only argument. So let me go here, generate and constructor. And finally, also let's generate the getters and setters. And now let's go to the authentication request, which is going to have a username and a password. So let me call private uh, string username and now let's just generate the getters and setters for these so, so let's generate here getters and setters for these two and that would be pretty much it here and let's keep working here first thing that we need to do let's create our authentication method so the login method so this is going to be of uh it's going to be an authentication response so this one right here and then call it login and then it's going to receive an authentication request uh, since we're going to use our authentication manager to log in the auth that's what the authentication that's what the authentication manager does let's call this auto wire here and then let's and then let's inject our authentication manager so now that we have our authentication manager that's what we're going to use to log in the user so call the authentic authentication manager and then we have this authenticate method which is going to receive our authentication token and this authentication token is going to come from the user and password authentication token method that we're going to be using and this comes from this authentication object right here there's many types of authentication in spring boot but the one that we're going to be using is this one authentication and password uh sorry so username and password authentication token so this is the type that we're going to use and let's just call it out out token there you go to summarize the name and then you have to create a new object which is going to be of type user password authentication token and then here inside you're going to pass in your out request your authentication request right here and then you have guess what passing your get username and then you're going to pass in your password as well so call in the authentication request and then pass in your password and then finally this is the authentication token request that you're going to have and then you pass in this authentication token to your authenticate object and this is what's going to handle the authentication so whatever happens here if the user doesn't go past this point it's because the authentication failed and if the user passed this point it's because the authentication was successful and another thing that you guys have to take in consideration is that all the authentication process being handled by and then below here let's call in our user type this user here and then user and then we're gonna have our user repository and then get our method right here find by username and then you're gonna pass in your authentication request and then uh, the method get username 
and then here you have to grab in your user right so and again here we don't have to handle any errors we know for certain that we have a user created in our database with the credentials that were sent right here because that's the job of the authentication manager to make sure the user exists before we get to this point so we don't have to handle any error okay guys and finally we need to return the authentication response which is a dto for the json web token pretty much we're gonna create our json web token so name string right here jwt and we're gonna have a json web token service that's going to handle this we haven't created this yet but we're gonna create it right now so let's name it right here json web token and we're gonna have a, a method that's gonna generate the token so generate token and then we're gonna pass in two things or user and we also have to generate claim which i'm going to explain you right now so gener and then you have to pass in the user right here to these claims and that's what we're gonna work on in the next section so let's return right here a new authentication response which is going to take our json web token right here all right guys so now we're in the official website of json web tokens and i just wanted to show you really quick if you guys are unfamiliar with the json web tokens architecture architecture or structure this is how a json web token looks like and it has three parts it has the first part which is called the header the second part which is called the payload or the data and the second part which is the signature which is what we use to verify if the request is original or not from our server here you can see that you have to specify the algorithm type which is an hs256 which is a very famous cryptographic algorithm and also you specify the type which is a type of json web token next we have the payload data and this is where we send our data pretty much so you can see right here that this is an example of someone sending an id a name and yeah that's it and the most important part is the verify signature because this is what we use in our server to verify this last part so we verify here that the token hasn't been altered with or we use this signature we possess we're gonna possess in our backend a unique identifier that we're gonna use to compare that this signature hasn't been altered so any data that we have here hasn't been tampered with because whenever you change something here, the token changes as you guys can see on screen. So yeah, that's pretty much what I wanted to tell you. Just wanted to give you a very basic idea of what's a JSON web token and how it looks like if you haven't, if you're not familiar with these concepts. Okay guys, so for the next step, we have to go to the Maven repository and then we have to install our dependencies for JSON web tokens. So now just type in here JGWT and then you're going to see that our JSON web tokens libraries have been divided into three libraries. So we actually have to install three in our application. The first one is the API. The second one is the JSON web token implementation. And then you're going to have to install the library for extensions. So what you pretty much have to do is go here and then you go here and this would be the lastest version and then you have to grab the dependency for this part grab the dependency for this one you copy and paste it and then you go back to your project and then you're gonna have to go to your palm xml file okay guys so now that we're back to the authentication service let me fix something that i forgot to do since the beginning you have to specify that this is a service because otherwise this is going to give you a nasty error when you try to compile this program so configure this uh, annotation right here and then we're gonna have to create our json web token service right so let me copy and paste this name and then let's go to our configuration folder and then let's new and we're gonna create a new class let's paste this json web token service and this class is gonna be a service as well so let's have the service annotation right here and let me go back here so now we need to auto wire the json web token service so let's go up here and then let me copy and paste this auto wire right here and then let's call in private all right guys so now that we have created our json web token service let's generate this extra claim method and we're gonna do it just down below here so for this generate extra claims we're gonna have our name on the role here so we're gonna use a map for that so let me just change the type here to a map and then it's gonna be to a map and then let me change the string and then an object so below here let me initialize a hash map so map string object as well string and object claims and then let's uh, initialize a new hash map and then let's put their extra claims right here and then you have to return the extra claims so return extra claims okay guys so now that we have taken care of the generate extra claims that we're going to use to generate our token let's go ahead and copy 
paste this method and go to our JSON Web Token um, class right here. And then we have to create the, the method, right? So let's call it public. So now that we have our params, we're going to have to create our JSON Web Token. So we're, we're going to call in the JSON Web Token library that we installed before. So it's this one right here. And then you have to call the builder uh, pattern right here. That's just, you know, to pretty much create the JSON Web Token. And then we have to set up a few properties. So the first one is set the claims. So let me call in set claims right here. And then you're going to pass in your extra claims. The next one is going to be the set the subject. So let me call in set subject, which is going to be the username, right? So call in the username and get the username. So read this one right here. The next one is going to be the issue out and then the expiration date of the token. So let me put the set uh, issue and then we're going to use Java to generate the date, the current date. So let me go right here. So let me specify a date and then issue. Then let's call it issue at issue at and then equal to a new the, the current time in milliseconds is this one perfect so let me put a let me put this right here and then we can impact then we can pass in this issue at and then the last one is going to be the um the expiration date so set expiration set expiration this one right here so the expiration is going to be uh, let me create again another um date so and i'm just going to add half an hour after the token has been created so we're going to use this date so let me call new date and then you have to pass in the issue at and then we have to add half an hour to that, but we have to do it in milliseconds. So let me find the, and then it's going to be 30 plus 60 plus a thousands to transform that to milliseconds, right? So I don't really want to have these, you know, hard coded right here, but usually forget what is this for. So let me just pass in this expiration date right here. So what you usually are going to do is to create the environment variable here. So let me bring in the value station right here. And then we're going to specify a private long, and then it's going to be the expiration in minutes. And then you can pass in this expiration instead of the application properties. So let me, <laughs> so now let's copy and paste this part right here. And then we have to go to our resources, application properties, and below here, let's just copy and paste this put 30 here and that's going to be it perfect okay guys so now that we're done here let's sign in our key so we need to type sign in with method and here's where we are going to specify a method to generate a key key and we're going to create this method in a second and then you have to pass in the signature algorithm type so the one is the standard to use is this one the algorithm the signature algorithm hs256 pretty much add and then you have to type the compact method that's going to build everything so below this method we can instantiate a private key it's going to be of the type key so make sure it comes from this java security and then paste the generate key token so what we have to do pretty much here is return our key so we're gonna have return and then we have to specify this keys uh, library that we this keys api from json web tokens here and then we have to get the hash so so we have to call in this function so you pretty much have to pass in your signature or your key and then just have to call get by methods right so well, now we need to generate a variable for t so we can store it securely in our application then let's name it secret key so secret just copy this part and go above right here and then we're going to create this private string so let's name it private and then it's and then it's a string and then we're going to do what we did before so grab a value right here and instead change the name to secret um, key and now just copy and paste this bar and then go to your application properties and below right here we're going to paste it so something that you can do is you can go here to base 64 and then you can generate your own keys too so we can type this is my secure my secure key and and you cannot hack hack it so yeah this is gonna be the this is going to be our key and this is going to be the encryption pretty much so let's just copy and paste this encryption and then we go back to our application so we paste this encryption right here and then let's go to the json web service and then right here instead of just passing the secret key directly and then get getting the bytes so you decode the base 64 key right here instead of doing it with this function right here and then we can just pass in this variable secret as bytes right here and yeah that's gonna do it as well
Okay guys, so now we need to generate our security filter. As I showed you in the diagram before, which if you don't remember is what's going to ultimately decide if you can do or cannot do the request. So summarizing what we're going to do our JSON, authentication filter is going to set up a context object called authenticate that's going to contain the context of our user authentication, which is not the user that's been mapped from the database. This is the user authentication object that's going to be uh, living inside our context or security context that's going to tell whether we have successfully authenticated and we can do requests and such that's what we have to do so let me go back to my config uh, folder right here and then I'm gonna create a new class which is gonna be called JWT authentication filter so now let's extend this uh, class so we have to extend this class to once per request filter so now we need to override one method which is the do filter internal so let me go right here and then we have to implement this method so let's go ahead and implement it well let me get rid of the file tree right here so this filter is going to do five tasks so we're gonna see that right now all right so the first step that we have to do so let me put a comment right here so we have some documentation we have to obtain the header that contains the json web token so oh, so let me just create a string right here which is gonna be called out header and then here we have to access our request and, and then use the get header method. And then if you go to Postman, you're going to see that this get header is called authorization. That's where our JSON web token lives, right? So let's call it authorization. Make sure you don't have any typos right here. If, so if you've done this before, you know that the header, the JSON web token header starts with a bearer and then the JWT. Essentially for the second step, we need to obtain this JWT token. So let me put it right here. So we have to do an range of strings pretty much so let me call this string and then jwt and then this is going to be the our header and then we have to split this header and then we're gonna split it by a space of course it's going to be one split so yep that would be the second step then for the third step we need to obtain the subject or the username that lives inside the jwt so let me put three so we need to call in here a string uh, username and then we're going to have to create a method later. So let me call the JWT service class that we have. And then we have to call in the extract, extract username method, extract username method that we're going to create. And we're going to pass in this JWT. So that would be the third step. And for the fourth step, we need to set our authentication. So we need to set the object authentication inside the security context, like I said before. So, so we need to get the user by the username. So we're going to pretty much have to access our repository again. So let me call in user and then user right here. And then we have to import this class. Um, yep, this one right here. Then we're going to call in our user repository, find the username by username, passing the username that we want to pass and then call in the get method right here. So now we need the authentication token that we already know that we're working with a username and password authentication token. So let me call in that username and password authentication token. It's this one right here. Let's call it out uh, token. And then we have to call in a new object, which is a new password and authentication token right here. And then we have to pass in three props. So the first one is the username. We have to pass in the username. Then you have to pass in the credentials, but the credentials are going to be null because we already passed these credentials. Once you're logged in, you already pass in these credentials. So you don't have to pass them again. And then you have to pass in the user and then get the authorities, right? So that's pretty much it here and lastly we have to access our security context holder context holder this one right here then we have to get the context and then we have to set the oops get the context and then we have to set the authentication right so set authentication and passing the authentication token that we have right here and lastly the fifth step is going to be to execute the rest of the filters so we need to call the filter chain and then do filter and then we're going to pass in the request and then response all right. So one small thing that we also have to do, and it's uh, if we don't, if we go here to step one, we have to do a little validation because let's say that in our request, we don't have this header. So you can actually put this header as null in your postman or in your application. So there's not going to be header. So we need to do a little verification right here. So let's call the out header. So let's say if this is going to be equal to null or the out header doesn't start with the bearer. So out header the stars with, and we're gonna pass in our bearer right here, bearer. And then the space, we're going to just return, right? So, so let's just return. So none of these logic executes, right?
And now we have to do another exception because let's say that we have, we are making a request and we don't have the header, but we're making a request to an endpoint that doesn't need authentication. So what's going to happen if we don't have this? Uh, the application is not going to work. So we need to actually execute the filter chain and then do filter and then pass in the request and then the response because we need to handle this case as well, well for non-protected routes. Okay, so now we need to inject these two services. So let's go right here to above the class and then let's call our outer wire annotation again. So outer wire, so let's call a private and then JSON, the JWT service, JWT service. Let's also add a wire or user repository so, and then name it user repository as well. So now, lastly, we need to create this method, extract username. So let me just create this method in the class, in the JSON Web Token Service class right here. So, so what we have to do right now is we have to extract the username from the JSON Web Token. So as remember, we have this information in our payload. So we pretty much have to parse the JWT token in three parts. And the three parts that it has, the header, the payload, and then the signing key. So we have a method for that. So let's call in their JWTS here and then call the parse builder parse builder right here and then we have to get the signing key first uh, because we need to validate we need to do the validations that the token is valid that this token has the correct signing key that hasn't expired yet and such so yeah so right here so inside here we need to pass in their generic key and then build the key here so passing the build method so inside here we need to pass in our generic key and then we have to build it so we need to pass in the method parse claims jwts then we need to parse the claims of the jwts and then then we're yeah, then you're going to see the methods that we have. We can access the signature. We need to, we can access the get body and then the header, but we need the body here and then we need the subject, right? So get the subject. So get subject is this one right here. And then I forgot to put this return here. And something that we have to do too is uh, because we can clean this function a little bit because we could use this to get, use this method. We can use this logic to get the sign in or the header. So let's extract this logic, right? Just copy this part and then we're going to go right here and then refactor. And then you're going to have extract method right here. So the method is going to be right here. And then we can use our method right here. Then once we extract the method, let's change the name to extract all claims. And then we can use it for future uses. And then you can just call the method right here and get the subject, which is what we want, right? The username. Okay, so now that we're done here, we have to go to the chain filter and then we have to inject the JSON authentication filter. So let me just go to my file tree and then you have to go right here to the security filter. Let me close again the file tree. And then you have to make sure you uh, put this uh, before the request. So we need to call the add filter before because it has to, because remember it has to be executed before the authentication object does the authentication process. So now we need to inject our JWT authentication filter in our class. So I'm gonna go above right here and then I'm gonna call private. And then, well, before private, we have to call the outer wire and then we have to call in our JWT authentication filter. So JWT authentication filter and then call in the JWT authentication filter. And now we need to pass in our JWT authentication filter. And then we have to pass in the class that's going to be executed before the authentication filter, which is the user name and password authentication filter class. So let me pass in the user username, password authentication filter class, this one right here. Okay, guys, so now that we're ready here, we're almost ready to test our application. I just wanted to tell you something else because uh, you have to make sure in your authentication, in your JSON Web Token authentication filter, make sure that you have this component, uh, make sure you have this component annotation right here because otherwise, because otherwise you will have a compile error. So now the next thing that we have to do is we have to go to my authentication servers. I want to create a method to register a user because we're using a Postgres database. So when I register a user first and then test the authentication endpoints so let me go to my authentication service right here okay so right here in my authentication service let me create a method and i'm just going to need pretty much one thing because i already have imports for everything I'm going to need my password encoder so i'm just going to uh private final and then bring in this password encoder on um, and then name it password encoder right here. I'm just going to create a constructor. Uh, that's it. So it's for this password encoder. So yeah. 
we're going to have to use this password encoder to encrypt our password once it's saving our database. So you'll see right now. So that, okay, so now let me specify a method which is going to be a public and we're going to have an authentication response too because yeah, I want to have the response as a JSON web token once I register. So yeah, why not? So let me have an authentication response and then this one is going to be called register and I'm just going to pass a user just for testing right now we don't really have to create a DTO or anything so it's just pass a user and then we're gonna have a variable user and then I'm gonna create a new user so new user right here and then we're gonna have to pass in uh, our data right so let me call in my user and then we're gonna have to set the name first so let me set the name and then inside here is going to come from the request get the name so this is first we also have two more not three more attributes so we have to pass in the user that get username so set the username and then from the request we have to get the username get username we have to uh, pass in the password as well so I have to set the password let's um uh, and then right here is where we are going to use our password encoder so password encoder that encode and then here passing the request that get password next we're gonna have to set the role so user the set the role and then we have to just request that get the role request that get the role Perfect. So now that this is the user, we have to just call in our user repository that's already injected before, then just save the user. So save and then pass in our user. Next, we need the token. So let me call in string token and then we're going to have equal to JWT service and then we have to generate a token. So let me generate a token and then we have to pass in just as before that we need to think the user and generate extra claims. So generate extra claims and then passing your user right here now that's pretty much it and then we have to return the new authentication response so new authentication response and then passing your token just like we did in the authentication method right here okay okay guys so now that this is taken care of we need to create the authentication controller so we are going to just go to the file tree let's go to my uh, authentication folder and let's Go ahead and create a new class, which is going to be called authentication, authentication controller. Perfect. So this authentication controller, we are going to have to inject our authentication server, right? So let me call in private, then final, then authentication service this one right here then calling the authentication service and then I'm just going to generate the constructor so if you hover over here generate the constructor and that's pretty much it let me close in the file tree okay so now that we have this part taken care of let's create our two methods for authentication so let me specify uh, the two of them are going to be a post request so post mapping the endpoints if I remember it's register the first one not capital so register so now let me define the annotations for the rest controller so make sure this is a rest controller and the second one you have to specify the endpoint and it was auth so request mapping so request mapping right here is going to be auth so now let's create the public method so public and then it's going to be a response entity response entity right here and then passing or authentication response then let's call this method register and then open uh, parentheses and open square brackets and we have to pass in a uh, request body right so request body and then we're gonna be using a user right user and then the request to log in right so let me import this user import the user class so it's our user now just need to return and it's going to be a response entry that okay so okay right here and then inside here just call in the authentication service and then call in the method which is register and then just pass in the request so this is going to take care of the register endpoint so below here let's create the authentication endpoint so let me have another post mapping here and then slash and then it's going to be called authenticate so now let's define public right here and then it's going to be a response entity and just the same as the other one is going to be a response authentication response then let's call the method authenticate 
and then same as before we're gonna have a request body right here and then it's just a little different because we have an authentication request already created for this so authentication uh, request and then it's going to be using this request here and then open the square brackets and then let's return and we're going to have a response entity that okay we pretty sweet so now let's call in the authentication service and then call in our login method and then you have to pass in the request all right so this is going to be taking care of the authentication controller and hopefully i don't have any typos okay so now that we have established the authentication we're going to be testing the authorization side of things because because we created a product model for this reason so let me go here let's go to the product folder right here and then let's create a product controller so product let's minimize the file tree and then above here let's specify our annotations so the first one is going to be request mapping so request mapping and then and then the endpoint is going to be products next one is going to be the rest controller so rest controller okay and one more thing we have to auto wire the private repository so product repository product repository and product repository in, in order to create a product so let me create the first one get mapping so get mapping and that's it so public response entity right here response entity here and then we're just going to return a string so string and then um get product and then here let's uh, just type something like hello from this secured uh, endpoint okay so now we need to create a controller to create a product so let's and for this one we're going to use the product repository so public response entity right here and then we're gonna have a product as a response so pass in the product and then name it create product now we have to pass in uh, just like before request body and then have to let's do a validation right here and then let's call in the product and then product and then let's open square brackets and then let's return and then let's call this response entity again and then the status code which is going to be uh, if, if it's successful let's call in this http status that created so which is a 201 essentially so now let's call in body right here and then call in the product repository product repository and then the save and then we have to save our product right and this is going to basically take care of the product controller and i think we're ready to test our endpoint so now i'm going to open postman so just a little refresher of what we're going to test right here so we're going to test our register endpoint which is public and then also and then once we register our user we're going to try to authenticate the user and then after we created a user which is going to be a customer and then we're going to create a user which is going to be admin we're going to try to access these endpoints and as you guys remember you need certain permissions to access these endpoints so if you want to post a product you need to you need to have the permission save one product and then if you want to uh, access these and then if you want to get a product you need this permission and we specify that at the beginning of the tutorial in permissions you have this is our permissions in roles right here actually you have if you're an admin you have the two roles if you're an admin you have the two permissions and if you are a customer you only have one permission so yeah that's essentially it let me go back to the entry point of the application and then hopefully everything's working so we have to run the service okay so the service seems to be working perfectly so now let's go to postman and test all right guys so we're here in postman and let's test the first endpoint which is going to be the register endpoint so let me have a post request our apache tomcat is running right here in the 301 out register and let's go ahead and party and now let's go ahead and create the body so let's type raw here then pick json and then just open uh square brackets right here and then let me send the request to see what happens and as you guys see we get a 500 error and yeah everything seems to be working uh, there's a response from the server so let me actually let me test something before let's try to access some of the urls that are protected so let me here let me specify this one the 
localhost products. So if we go here, you're going to see that we have a 403 forbidden. So we don't have a JSON web token in the request. So that seems to be working perfectly fine. So now let's just create a user to see what happens. So we need four things. We need a name and then the name is going to be uh, Lionel Messi. Now we need the username. So username and then the username is going to be uh, Messi. Now we need two more things. We need the password and the password is going to be hello uh, world. And you also need to pass in the role here. So we have to pass in the role and then Messi is going to be a customer. So customer, let's pass in the role here and let's try to create our user. We should have a JSON web token as a response. And we have successfully created the user. So let me check the database right now. So I'm here in my terminal. So let me type PSQL and the name of the database is template uh, one. So I'm inside here. So to check my tables, you have to type you have to type that slash dt, and then you're gonna see my tables. And as you see, we have two tables. I ignored the node and the post. That was from I that was from other applications. So we have the user table and the product table. So let's uh, select the product table. So you guys see it's going to be empty because we haven't created anything yet. So select from product you're going to see that we have an ID, a name and a price. And now we have to do the same for users. So let me just type a slash user. And then you're going to see that we created our Lionel Messi customer and it has the role customer, it has a username Messi and now perfectly. And now let me go ahead and test the authentication endpoint. So right here, let me type in authenticate and then it's going to be a post request. It's going to be body it has to be a role, JSON, so the username and we also need something else so the, and we also need the password so the username it's uh i already forgot it's uh messy let's copy and paste it right here messy and the password is going to be hello world so let's try to log in with a wrong password so i have a typo right there so let's see what's going to happen we're going to have a 403 forbidden because we don't have access we're trying to sign in with the wrong password so now if we try to access with the right password we're going to have a json web token as a response which is cool so now if we copy and paste this json web token let's copy and paste it and let's go back to my product uh, url right here and then and then let's go to authorize go right here to json bearer uh, this one actually to the json token bearer then you have to replace this token copy and paste this token and then if we try to access this route now we're going to see hello from the secure endpoint now we have the permission to access this route now remember that we are only a customer in a role so now let's try to create a product right so let's go ahead and post So right here, products, let's type body, let's go here to row, and then we need to pass in the name. And then we, and then if I remember correctly, we need to pass in the name and we also need to pass in the product. So, and then we also need to pass in the price. So let me just name it product. And then the price. And then the price is going to be 544. So now let me let me try to send this request. We're going to have a 403 uh, forbidden, but we don't have the token. Now let's try to pass in the token and see if we try to access the route. So bear token. Let me copy and paste this token. And you're still going to get the 403 because we are not an admin. We don't have permissions to access this route. So let's go back to the to here to the authentication or to the register and let's create a new, another user with the admin role so let's type this so let's switch this to admin now let's change the name to cristiano cristiano uh, ronaldo and then just ronaldo here and then the password is going to be the same one so boom we have successfully registered let me check the database if we really uh, register so you see that Cristiano Ronaldo is right here and then it has the role of admin so we should be able to create a product with Cristiano Ronaldo so let's go back to postman and let's go back uh, let me copy 
okay, I already uh, registered, so I have to log in first, right? So let's go to the authentication endpoint, then type in Ronaldo, and then it's going to be the same password. So yeah, perfect. So we were able to log in. Let me copy and paste this JSON web token. Let's go to the to this route. Let's try to access this product here. Copy and paste it. We still are able to access our products. And now let's try to create a product. So let me delete this part. Let me switch this uh, token. Let's go to the body. If let's go to the body right here, and then let's create a product. And we have a bad request and okay i know why so this is actually a long and i was passing it as a string so and then all right so now let's send in the product and now we were able to create the product because because we have the necessary permissions which is pretty cool guys so now let me just minimize everything let's go back to the terminal and now let's select uh, the t now let me select select everything from product and you see we have created a product in our database okay and everything seems to be working fine or authentication method or register method and then the authorization side of the project is also working we have roles we have an admin and we have a customer role which is pretty cool guys so let me go back to the application now and now we're back in the application the server is still running so if you need to debug everything just check everything right here and yeah guys that was pretty much the project from today and if you have any questions just hit me up in the comments down below i'm going to post all this project in github and it was a pretty cool project and thank you so much for watching and making it this far see you on the next one